All right, an explosive and violent end to the Browns and Steelers game, even by football standards. Ugh. Cleveland Browns defensive lineman Miles Garrett hit with an indefinite suspension, suspension after ripping off and hitting Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph on the head with his own helmet. Joining us now to discuss former NFL players Chris Valletta, Sean James, and Jack Brewer. Gentlemen, thanks all for being here. Chris, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Uh, how does it, I mean, this, uh, football is football. It's a violent sport, but this seems beyond the pale. How does something like this happen? Yeah, way beyond the code. Um, helmet comes off, you stop. Uh, every football player knows that. Inexcusable, uh, you know, from Miles Garrett, no doubt. I think what's important is, you know, football, uh, one of the things football teaches you is your ability to control your emotions. And even when you're provoked, which Miles Garrett was, he was provoked. The, all of the, the, the shots and angles show that. Even when you're provoked, the ability to control your emotions and not lose your cool is actually harder than getting in a fight in the first place. Yeah. We've all been there. Uh, we've all gone through this in football. Uh, this lesson of controlling your emotions <laughs> certainly resonates. It's going to sting Miles Garrett for a while. Well, Sean, um, this is what Miles Garrett had to say after the incident. He said, I lost my cool, and what I did was selfish and unacceptable. I want to apologize to Mason Rudolph, my teammates, our entire organization, our fans, and the NFL. <clears throat> I know I have to be held accountable for what happened, learn from my mistakes, and I fully intend to do so. So, Sean, um, where does he go from here? I think, you know, this is what happens in the heat of battle. I mean, as we all know, when things are, are on the line, uh, a lot of emotions come in and you just have to be able to control yourself. Um, that's what makes them professionals. Uh, these are things that you've dealt with in high school to college and there's accountability. I mean, there's rules. Um, when you look at chapter 17 in the rule book, uh, it was something that probably could have just been a penalty if he would not swung the helmet intent to actually hurt the other player. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, it, it's bad for Cleveland. It's bad for the league. Um, you know, this is America's culture. We love football. And anytime something like this happens, we have to be able to address it and use this as an, uh, a learning experience. But more importantly, uh, the fans and the players, we want this to be respected so this game can move forward. So I think he's going to have to deal with the consequences. Unfortunately, I think he'll probably get the rest of the season, and I would say one game in the next season. But yeah. I don't think any of these guys are bad people. I just think that this is in the heat of the moment, and when you're trying to swing a helmet and actually hurt another player, this yeah. is just not good for the game. Chris, I'm going to go to you. We lost Jack's shot. Hopefully we'll get him back. But I want to, to, to the point of the suspension, here's what the NFL had to say. They said Garrett has been suspended without pay indefinitely. Garrett violated unnecessary roughness and unsportsmanlike conduct rules, as well as fighting, removing the helmet of an opponent and using the helmet as a weapon. Chris, I mean, indefinitely is a scary word. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the NFL does here? Look, the NFL has worked hard on changing the narrative over the last few years from, you know, domestic violence and murder and protesting and revising a lot of the, the player personal conduct policies. So they've got to drop the hammer here. I, I do feel for Miles Garrett, but, you know, he made a bad decision. I think this isn't just going to sting emotionally. You're taking the game away from him, and that mm -hmm. ultimately, even more than financially, matters more. But this is going to sting financially. He's losing a million dollars in salary uh, from the six-game suspension just from this season. The Browns actually have an option to recoup up to $5 million of his signing bonus uh, that's allocated for 2019. Who knows what could potentially happen in, from an endorsement standpoint. I do you know, know that Miles Garrett certainly feels for what he did. He got caught up in the yeah. heat of the moment. But, you know, this is a huge issue. The NFL, uh, Troy Vincent, uh, who, who, who issues the fines from the NFL corporate office here from, in New York City, you know, he has to drop the hammer. This yeah. a lesson and a message has to be sent to the NFL. It's a tough situation. You know, Sean, Chris raises a good point. The NFL's been through a lot over the last couple of years, and that may feed into what happens here. Yeah. One of those things was uh, the kneeling controversy during the national anthem. Well, today, Colin Kaepernick is in Atlanta for an NFL workout. At least 24 teams will reportedly attend. Is this just a PR stunt, or do you think there would be an NFL team that might bring Kaepernick back? No, I don't think this is a PR stunt at all. I think the time is right. It's been three years. I think that at the end of the day, um, it, it's an opportunity so the NFL can say, hey, we're going to give him a fair shot. If this guy can still be the player that he once was, he deserves a chance to play. But I think during the moments of the protests and all the things that happen around it, 
it wasn't a good thing for the NFL. I think they did not want the distraction. I think it made a lot of sense for them not to uh, give him that opportunity until things calm down. I think people like Jay-Z and uh, the, the culture of African-Americans, uh, they needed to understand that we need to one step away from this. So it won't be as stressful for him as well. I don't hmm. think hopefully there will be no questions about the protest. Yeah. So he could actually go there and perform and, and, and hopefully have a chance to play again. Chris, that's a, that's a key question. I mean, it, stepping away from a game for three years, it's tough for three weeks, let alone three years. So talk to speak, if you will, about the performance aspect. But then also, you know, does a team take a risk? Does he kneel again? Where does this go? So teams are evaluating talent on one condition. Can this player help this team? win more games. Um, I actually believe Colin Kaepernick probably physically has the tools to come back and play. And if he does, chances are he'll be on a team in the next couple of weeks. But in that talent evaluation also comes the evaluation of what kind of baggage comes with a player. Colin Kaepernick found himself in the middle of a political superstorm. And that, you know, really changed the game, changed a lot of things. So teams have to evaluate, if we bring Colin into our organization, what does that mean? What does it mean for security at the stadiums? What does it mean for, you know, PR value? All of these things are measured in mm -hmm. this evaluation. And those things that are measured, what gets measured gets done, and what gets measured equals dollars. And so yep. that's going to be the interesting balance. If a team decides to take a risk, that will be in the consideration for sure. Chris Valletta, Sean James, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we'll, and we'll get Jack Brewer back here as well. We love him. So thank you all. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you.